Welcome back. Despite the pandemic, 2021 has been a busy year for space, both for the US and for China and Russia, with launches of long-awaited projects, the development of SpaceX's Starship, brand new rockets exploding, and of course, billionaires flying themselves up to space. The latter looks set to fire up an industry which has been largely theoretical for decades, with lucrative fees to be charged alongside an enthusiastic base of very wealthy potential customers, the opportunity to drive these space businesses to new levels is very much there. This summer, the US has taken such a lead that the space race in this area is almost an entirely domestic contest. So how did we get here? And what will the future of this industry look like? Until this year, the only way a paying tourist could get to space was to speak to the Russian space agency Roscosmos and negotiate the price of a seat on one of its Soyuz missions to the International Space Station. Over the past few decades, these flights have predominantly been sold to other governments, with NASA buying seats in significant numbers after the space shuttle retired and the UAE recently flying an astronaut to the ISS. However, the first private sales of seats on these flights go back to the 90s, just after the fall of the Soviet Union. Japanese TV journalist Toyohiro Akiyama flew to the Mir space station in 1990 on a ticket bought by his employer, Japanese broadcaster TBS. He was soon followed by British astronaut Helen Sharman, who flew on a mission sponsored by a private consortium called Project Juno the following year. But the first true space tourist is usually credited to US billionaire Dennis Tito, who bought himself a seat on a mission to the then under construction ISS in 2001, with his eight day trip coming in at a cool $20 million. Through the rest of that decade, a further seven private astronauts bought trips to the station, with the last one being Guy Labilitaire in 2009. That was the last real space tourism flight until the US kicked the industry into a new gear this summer. The idea of taking paying tourists to space isn't a new concept in the US. In the 70s and early 80s, there were proposals to build a removable cabin that could fit into the space shuttle and take over 70 passengers at a time into space for three days. This incredible project was part of a wide array of shuttle versions that likely needs a video of its own, but unfortunately never came to fruition and was permanently shelved following the Challenger disaster. It wasn't until 2005, following the successful launch of the Ansari X Prize winning Spaceship One, that Richard Branson announced the creation of Virgin Galactic to leverage the design to take tourists on suborbital space flights from the US. Other entrants into the X Prize competition also looked to adapt their designs into potential tourism vehicles, but it's testament to how hard space and human spaceflight in particular is that none of these have yet to take a paying tourist into space. Virgin Galactic stirred up a lot of interest, highlighting the demand for a more affordable version of space tourism was there, allowing millionaires rather than just billionaires the chance to travel to space. The US followed up with proposals for regulating space tourism later that year, and New Mexico filed legislation to create a launch site for tourism flights in 2006, complete with a terminal building, Spaceport America, opened in 2011. However, despite this rush into the industry, space is hard, and it wasn't until this summer that the projects truly began to bear fruit. Jeff Bezos, newly retired from his job at Amazon, announced that his space company, Blue Origin, was finally ready to fly humans on its suborbital New Shepard vehicle. The fully reusable system had been in development for well over a decade, and despite initially flying test flights in 2015, the first flights with human aboard was finally scheduled for July 20th this year with Jeff aboard. With the gauntlet thrown down, Virgin Galactic switched up its testing schedule to allow CEO Richard Branson to fly on a test nine days earlier. Unlike the new Shepard vehicle, Virgin Galactic's craft have flown with two pilots aboard through the testing period, however this will be the first flight with passengers aboard. The successful flight of VSS Unity gave Branson the plaudits of flying before Bezos, however the flight was entirely made up of Virgin Galactic employees. When Blue Origin launched later in the month, the crew contained Jeff Bezos and his brother Mark, as well as invited guest Wally Funk, who trained to be an astronaut in NASA's Women in Space program in the 60s. Alongside them was an actual paying tourist, the youngest person to go to space, Oliver Damon. Whilst Virgin can claim to be the first to fly passengers, and Blue the first to fly tourists, and they continue to squabble over whether Virgin actually flew to space, the progress was clear. In a matter of days, the US now had two proven vehicles capable of carrying space tourists. Then in September, the big guns arrived, with SpaceX launching the Inspiration4 mission with four tourists aboard. Rather than the quick up and back trips in July, this flew all the way to orbit on a trip lasting nearly three days. Although fully autonomous, two of the passengers were trained to fly the craft in an emergency. They used the same Falcon 9 and Dragon spacecraft NASA has been using to fly astronauts to the International Space Station for the past two years. Albeit without the need for a docking hatch, the craft was fitted with a glass cupola to offer incredible views to those aboard. SpaceX has further ambitions for tourism. Its next generation Starship craft is in active development and is being developed to fly manned missions to the Moon and Mars. However, it has signed a deal with Japanese billionaire Yusaku Meizawa to fly eight passengers around the Moon in the new craft in the 2020s. 
However, in the more immediate term, the success of Inspiration4 has prompted a swarm of interest in similar flights. The company has already sold a private flight to the ISS to Axiom Space, which is due to fly early next year, following NASA opening up the ISS to such flights in 2019. However, the company could also develop further Dragon capsules to be more focused on tourist flights. With three space tourism providers actively flying, the US has taken a huge lead in the industry in just a matter of months. And given the long lead times in developing human-rated craft, it looks set to stay in that position for a while. In Japan, PD Aerospace is constructing a spaceport it hopes to be ready to launch tourists by 2025. And the Russians are looking to get back into the business too, with SpaceX's lunar customer, Yusaku Meizwa, set to fly to the ISS in the Soyuz craft with a companion later this year. China are keen not to be left behind either, with CAS Space announcing plans for a rocket that look very similar to a combination of the new Shepard launch rocket and SpaceX's Dragon capsule. However, it's not clear when this will be ready to fly. The future of space tourism looks bright, with flights set to boom over the coming years. There are concerns over the environmental impact of these flights, but they will certainly provide a significant funding stream to the space industry. Whilst the industry is young and full of potential, it is working on the bleeding edge of science, and as more rockets launch, the potential for an instant increases. How the industry deals with such an incident, if it happens, will be key to its future. But with demand strong and development focused on bringing down costs to levels afforded by more and more everyday people, tourism can become one of the biggest parts of the space industry in the decades to come.